Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at updating our rooted Pixel 2 to the latest version of Android 10, the November security update whilst maintaining root and hopefully all our data. But that shouldn't excuse you from making any backups now. And before we begin, we need to make sure that we don't have any suspicious or any modules that may potentially give us uh, issues when updating, such as exposed. I know that one is a usually the culprit. So without any further ado, we need to start off by downloading a few things. So let's head over to our computer here. And the first thing we need to download is the latest version of the SDK platform tools. Now this is just a few programs, uh, namely ADB and Fastboot that allow us to communicate with our phone, send the commands over from our computer. And we need to download the latest one for our operating system here. So I'm gonna download the one for Windows. You'll need to check and agree to the terms and conditions and click on the blue download button. I'm just going to save everything into one folder as well, just so we can keep track of everything. The next thing you wanna download after that is the latest factory image for our Pixel 2 or 2XL. So let's download the latest one here, scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on the one for the November security update. And I'm just going to save this in the same folder as well. And the next thing we wanna check out is TWRP for our device. Make sure you get the latest version. Uh, you might be at this page, just scroll down and click on one of the download links here, depending on where you're closer to, and then download the latest version of the TWRP installer, as well as the TWRP image. Now flashing the TWRP installer is completely optional. If you don't want to have TWRP on your phone, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to download this, but you have to download this uh, just so we can flash Magisk again. And last but not least, we'll download the latest version of Magisk here. So let's scroll down a little bit and just the latest stable version will do. So I'm gonna click on that and also save that in the same directory as where everything else is. And all in all, you should have at least four, if not five files. That includes the Magisk, the platform tools, TWRP bootable image, the TWRP installer, which is optional again, and of course our factory image. And the first thing we need to do with these files is open up the platform tools folder and extract the entire platform tools folder outside. Now this will allow us to use those programs that I mentioned earlier. And if you already have an existing installation of this, so you've used the platform tools before, you can use the same ones provided that they're not too old. And I'll show you how to check the version of that in just a second. And the next thing you wanna extract is the factory image. So let's open that up, open the folder inside the factory image and then extract the bootloader image and radio images outside, just like that, those three files. Give this a few moments, it is quite large, and these will extract all into your Android folder. Okay, now that that's done, we can close the factory image here, and we need to open up the platform tools folder. So you're inside here, you see all these programs and all these other files. Here is where you need to open up a command prompt window uh, this really only applies to those who don't have the platform tools folder added to their path environment variable. I do have a link to that down below. And just quickly what that does is it allows you to run these programs without having to change directories of your command prompt window, which is very useful and very helpful if you plan on doing these sorts of things. But alternatively, what you can do is go to the folder itself, go into the address bar and type in the word CMD. This will launch the command prompt, which is cmd.exe that has the path already changed to the platform tools. So that way you can run ADB and Fastboot and all these other programs here. And that'll allow you to uh, run these programs from this command prompt window. So I'm going to load up my console emulator instead. Just allows me to zoom in and all that. Makes it easier for you guys to see. And once you've opened up the command prompt window, you need to go back up one folder, back into the Android folder where all our other files are. And I'll also put that aside like so. Now, once you've done that, we can now go ahead and start the updating process. Now, what we can do now is on your phone, make sure you have everything backed up in case things do go wrong, um, but hopefully they don't, and usually it doesn't. So, but it's always good practice to back up your stuff regardless. So let's reboot our phone into the bootloader right now. So let's tap on restart, and I'm going to hold the volume down button as soon as it turns black or freezes and just keep holding it until we get into the bootloader. Okay, now we're in. So you can see that the options here have changed a little bit as I was holding down the volume down button. It doesn't really matter what it says up here. So download mode, start, reboot bootloader, 
it doesn't matter as long as you're in the bootloader because I know the Pixel 2 XL doesn't have that download mode option available. But as I said, that doesn't really mean anything. It's just a menu that you can select from. But as long as you're in this bootloader screen, you should be good to go. So once you've done that, we need to head over back to our computer. And this is where we need to type in our fastboot uh, command that checks the version. So let's do that first. Let's type in fastboot double dash, oh sorry, yeah, double dash version. And you should see the fastboot version as 29.0.5 at least. I recommend that you always go to the latest version. And this is also a good way of indicating which one you're running. So maybe you have downloaded the latest version like you did at the beginning of the video, but it still gives you some kind of older version of fastboot. It could mean that it has detected the fastboot executable in a different folder, and this will show you where it is so you can fix that up. But as long as you're running the latest version of fastboot, we can go ahead updating our phone. And to start off, we'll update the bootloader image. So let's type in fastboot flash bootloader leave a space after the word bootloader and drag in the bootloader image. Now, if you can't drag and drop an image like that, you can copy the path of this file or the file that you want to load into the command prompt by holding shift and right clicking on the file and then selecting copy as path down here in one of the contextual menu options. And what you can do with that is right click and paste the uh, path of the file so you don't have to drag and drop and then you can hit enter. So same as before, pretty much. Now we'll let this update the bootloader. And once that is done, we can reboot our phone back into the bootloader. And to do that, we can type in fastboot reboot dash bootloader. On newer versions of, I think it's the bootloader rather than fastboot, you should be able to type fastboot reboot bootloader without the dash in the middle. But anyways, once we're back in the bootloader, let's update the radio or baseband version. So let's type in fastboot flash radio, leave a space after that. And I'll show you another cool trick if you followed uh, opening up the command prompt window in the platform tools folder. To access things inside the Android folder, this is also known as the parent directory, we can put in two dots. Now, what the two dots represents is the parent directory, which is Android. And if we put in a backslash for Windows, we should be able to type in the word radio and hit tab on your keyboard, and that will auto fill out the file name that it finds from this folder which is pretty handy. So we can hit enter after that. And of course you can always drag it in or copy the path of the file and put that in. But this is just another shortcut that you can take. And once you've done that, we need to do the same thing as rebooting our phone back into the bootloader. So we can use the up arrow key on our keyboard to access previous commands. And once you have the right command, press enter. And once our phone is back into the bootloader, let's flash the image zip file that we extracted earlier. So let's type in fastboot, double dash, skip dash reboot, and then the word update. Leave a space after that, and let's drag in the image zip file like so, and hit enter. Now this will extract all the images inside this image zip file, and then uh, to your computer, and then attempt to flash them to our phone here. So this will take a little bit since there are a number of files here, and they are quite large. So I'll fast forward this process, and after this, we'll be able to boot into TWRP, where we can flash TWRP optionally and reboot our phone. Okay, so that's finished updating now. Now we can boot up the TWRP image to finish it off by rooting our device. So let's type in fastboot boot, leave a space after the word boot and drag in the TWRP image and hit enter. Now with this version of TWRP version 3.3.0-0, uh, currently is not able to decrypt the data partition running Android Q or 10, I should say. Uh, so we'll have to use ADB to sideload the Magisk installer as well as the TRP installer. Now this is just an unfortunate side effect of, I guess, updating our phone so often. So you can see when I enter in my passcode, uh, it does fail. So we need to hit cancel on this screen. And with the system read only, you can keep that as read only. There's no real problem about that. And then we can head over to advanced and then over here, tap on ADB sideload, leave these options as usual and swipe to start the sideload. Now we need to head back to our command prompt window now and let's type in ADB devices. Let the ADB daemon start up and it should show that our device is connected in the sideload mode. Here it is. 
And we, the first thing we're going to do is sideload the TDRIP installer. Now, once again, installing this is optional. And if you don't want to install this and all you want is to reboot your phone, all you need to do is drag in the Magisk zip file instead. So to sideload something, we need to type in adb sideload and drag in the file that you want to sideload. In this case, I'll install the TWRP recovery to my phone. If you don't want that, you can just drag in the Magisk zip file instead. Now this will load up everything to our phone and you can also see here, it's starting the installation as it is streaming there. So we'll give this a moment for it to do its thing. And after that, we'll just test that TWRP has in fact been installed on our phone. So we'll reboot our phone into the recovery. So let's switch over to the camera here. Let's go back once and tap on reboot. I'm going to unplug my device just for a sec and tap on recovery. This is really just to show you that uh, I can, or it is installed properly. And I'm going to uncheck this and tap on do not install. Uh, from my experience, installing that will cause more problems than good but you can always download it from the Google Play Store anyways. So this should reboot our phone back into TWRP. So I'm just going to plug it in right now again, and it should do so automatically. There we go. Uh, this version is the same as the one that we booted from, so we won't be able to decrypt our data partition. We can keep the system read only. It'll keep asking that because it can't read the configuration file that we have saved in our data partition. And we need to go to advanced again, and then tap on ADB sideload. And from here, what we can do is, of course, swipe to start sideload, almost forgot about that. And let's head over back to our computer, we will do the same command, ADB sideload, and instead we'll drag in our Magisk zip file, hit enter, and watch that stream over to our device and install itself. And once that is done, we'll be able to reboot our phone back into Android and see that our phone is rooted and it has TWRP as we have seen just now and hopefully all our data intact as well. So fingers crossed and let's tap on reboot system. Let's not install the TWRP app and let's see if our phone will turn on. Okay, so our phone has booted up. That's nice and quick. Let's enter in our passcode, screen lock I should say, and you should see that we are finishing the system update here which is all fine and dandy. Let's have a look at Magisk Manager and everything is still up to date and ready to go, which is fantastic. So all our modules should still be here. Whoops, there we go, modules. Everything is still here, which is nice. So that's it guys, thanks for watching. And if you have any problems or questions, feel free to leave it down below in the comment section. But even better yet, why don't you join us on Discord where it's much easier to carry on conversations and we can share pictures and screenshots and all that. Uh, and also if you just want to chat about uh, technology, phones, and things related to Android, I guess. So hop on there if you have a Discord account. And as always, happy flashing.